Let's see how we can take data labels in a chart that would normally look like this and turn them into something like this. Now if you look closely, not only are we applying custom number formatting to reduce the value to a rounded value, but we're also adding a metric to that like millions or thousands or maybe nothing at all. But the trick is how to get that metric to be different depending on the value of the number. We're also going to see how to give the user the ability to change what they see as the data label. So maybe they want to see the numbers, but maybe they'd rather see icons that indicate some sort of status. And just to have a little fun with it, maybe even some happy faces. So let's see how we can create custom chart labels in Excel. We'll begin by just understanding some basics of custom number formatting. And these skills can be used anywhere in Excel, not just in charts. Then we'll look at how to build some logic in to provide custom number formatting by the range. We'll start by building this logic in sections so we understand what each piece is responsible for, but then we'll pull it all together in a single formula. Next, we'll see how to take the output of that formula and apply it as a custom data label in a chart. Then we'll look at a neat trick for utilizing Windows emojis to produce the faces and the icons along with the numbers. Finally, we'll allow the user to switch between the numbers, faces, and icons by using data validation. We'll begin by understanding a few of the custom number formatting codes. Now you should consider this an introduction to custom number formatting. This is by no means a complete tutorial of what you can do with custom number formatting. But we'll start with this number here. Suppose I wanted to show that in a currency style. Now we could go up here to this drop down for styles, set it to a currency style and achieve our goal. But we can also do that with a formula. The function that can customize numbers formulaically is called text. So I'm going to put this back as just a generic number format. These are the codes that would be used by Excel to create that currency style. The dollar sign indicates the currency symbol we want to use. A pound sign is a placeholder that means if there's a value in this position, we'll show it, but if there's not, we won't. The comma is there to let us know that every three places we place a comma. And the zero says you will show a value here even if there isn't one. So if there's no number, we'll show a zero. Now to use those codes to customize this number, I'll start with equals text, then I'll point to this value, comma, and then in double quotes, you'll type in those codes. So dollar sign, pound, comma, pound, pound, zero, point, zero, zero, close double quotes, close parentheses. And when I hit enter, I get the style. Now you can either hard code those codes within the formula, or you could point to a cell that holds those codes. So going back into the formula, I could actually replace this entire second argument with a pointer to cell B3. Hit enter and get the same thing. By pointing to a cell, that gives you the ability to then change it dynamically because you could point to different cells that hold different format codes. But now let's look at a formatting code that a lot of people aren't familiar with. Suppose I only wanna show one place after the decimal point and I don't want to show the ones, tens, or hundreds places. This would be the code for that. I wanna show the currency symbol. I'll show numbers where the pound signs are if numbers exist, but I won't if they don't and I will show zeros at one position on both sides of the decimal. But the symbol that most people aren't aware of is when you place a comma after the fractional part of the number, that removes three levels of magnitude. So I'll lose the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. So let's go back to this original formula. I'm gonna go into the text function and press F4 on this reference to the actual value so I can lock that into position. But then I'll pull that formula down, and now we're taking this value and formatting it against these codes. Now this has visually changed the number, so I'd probably wanna put something like a T at the end of this to denote thousands. But before we do, let's just look at one more thing. Suppose I were to add two commas after the fraction. Remember, each comma removes three levels of magnitude. So if I put a second comma here, I'll lose this four, this three, and this two. Let's pull our formula down, and I now see 1.2. Now $1.20 is a far cry from $1.2 million. So here's where we'd put some sort of note at the end of it to denote that, oh, this is in millions. So if I pull my formula down now, I see 1.2 million. And you could put a T here, you could put a K, you could put a B. It's whatever value helps convey the information best. So let's use this comma trick to remove levels of magnitude from the value and then append some sort of letter to help explain what we've done. Be sure to download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along and practice. So here we have 12 years worth of sales, and I've turned this into a simple column chart. I'll go to a column, right click, add data labels, and this is what we get by default. Clearly this is not going to work for us. So what we'll do is we'll use the text function 
to create a custom formatted version of these values, then go to the data labels and have them point to the custom version. Now, since I want different levels of magnitude, one for millions, one for thousands, and then one for the smaller numbers, we'll have to create a piece of logic that can detect the value of the sale and then apply the appropriate text formatting codes. Let's build this in pieces so we can understand what each piece is doing. Then we'll roll it all up together into a single formula. And that's what the chart will actually look at. So suppose we only want to check to see if a number is greater than or equal to a million dollars. So we'll write a simple if statement that checks to see if the sale is greater than or equal to one million. And if it is, we'll use a text function to take that sale and then give it a format code. So in double quotes, we'll use dollar sign, pound, comma, pound, pound, 0, 0.0, close double quote, close parentheses for the text, close parentheses for the if. Hit enter. Now this number is not currently over a million, so it renders a false, but we'll fill this down. And every number that is greater than a million has had the format code applied to it. Now I did not remove the levels of magnitude, so I need to go back into this formula, click after the fraction, and add two commas because I want to remove six levels of magnitude and each comma is responsible for three levels. I'll hit enter, refill this down, and now we're getting the numbers. Now without the letter metric at the end of it, I've altered the story. So going back into the codes, if this was thousands, I would add a T, hit enter, and fill this down. Now these are millions, so I'm going to change that T to an M. And when I fill this down, I get errors. Now the reason being is M actually is a code that stands for something. It could be used for months, it could be used for minutes. So when using M to denote millions in the text function, you actually have to surround the M with an extra set of double quotes. But here's the kicker. If I were to go to the M and just put an extra set of double quotes around it, this actually confuses the text function because it thinks this is the end of the format string and then it won't look at anything past it. So the trick is to add two sets of double quotes around the M. So this is the actual normal M that you would use to denote millions in a text function. You don't have to do this with T because T doesn't mean anything else in the format code world. But if you're using something like M or a B, those letters do have other meanings. So you have to enclose them in double quotes, but because of the text function, you have to do it in double double quotes. It's just something you have to get used to. So I'll hit enter and now we've got our millions. Before we build the formatting codes for the thousands and then the smaller values, let's just see how we can take what we've calculated and replace the existing data labels. So I'll go to a data label, right click, format data labels, and then instead of showing the normal values, I'm going to use the values from cells. And this allows me to browse out and point to an alternate set of cells by which to draw the labeling from. I'll hit okay, and now check out our chart. So any place where there was a number greater than a million gets a format code and anything else gets a false because the if didn't calculate. Now, of course, we need to replace all these falses with something else. And that would be the same kind of text formatting, but with a T instead of an M. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to take the original formula we created to detect the millions, copy that, go here and paste it. Now we have to make some modifications to this. First off, I'm not going to use an M, I'm going to use a K. And since K doesn't have any other special designation in the formatting codes, I don't have to place it within a double set of double quotes. I also want to remove one level of magnitude removal because I only want to remove the ones, tens, and hundreds place. And we'll also take this test from 1 million to 100,000. We'll press enter, fill this down. And the problem with this is if something is less than a million but over 100,000, we get the formatting codes that we like. But if it's over a million, we get the wrong formatting codes. See, in 2016, we'd like this formatting code, but in 2017, we'd like a completely different one. So I need this to be rendered in as a false. To do that, we have to build a bit of additional logic in the if test, because we can't just test for greater than or equal to 100,000. It has to be between 100,000 and a million. So we'll have to take this test and wrap it inside of an and function, and first test to see if B3 is less than 1 million, comma, and the second test will be for B3 to be greater than or equal to 100,000. We'll put a close parenthesis that closes off our and, hit enter, and fill this down. And now the only places that get this format code are sales that are between 100,000 and a million. If we go back to the chart and right click format data labels, and in the value from cells, if we change that range from this column to this second set of format codes, 
hit OK. Now we only see custom number formats in numbers that are between 100,000 and a million. But not to worry because we're going to blend the logic of these two together. But before we do, we have one final logic test to perform to apply formatting for any number that's less than 100,000. I'll go back to the original formula, highlight, copy that, come back over here, paste. We don't want to remove any levels of magnitude, and I don't want to show a fraction. There will also be no extra explanation of what this number represents, so all we need is the closing double quotes. But instead of testing for greater than or equal to 100,000, we're going to test for less than 100,000. So if it's less than 100,000, we just apply like a normal currency style with no fraction. We'll hit check, fill it down, and now we see the only values that get this formatting are numbers less than 100,000. Just to see how these would look in the chart, we'll go to our custom data labels, right click format data labels, select range, and I'm going to select the third set of format codes. And now the only values that get format codes are the really low ones. Now we need to take the logic of all three of these and combine them into a single formula because the chart can't look at multiple custom data label ranges. We need to write a nested if that incorporates the logic of the three independent ifs. Now because I don't want to type all this stuff again, I'm just going to copy paste it. So we'll start with this one, we'll highlight copy it, we'll go to the all column, paste this formula down, and we'll go ahead and hit enter temporarily. Now let's go get the formula for the in-betweens. We'll highlight that, copy it, and now we'll go in between our closing parentheses, add a comma, and paste. I'm going to expand my formula bar down so we can see all that's happening. So here's the logic that calculates for the millions, and here's the logic that calculates for the thousands. We'll hit check. Let's go ahead and fill it down just to see what it looks like. And you can see how we're carrying all the millions over and all of the hundred thousands over, but we're not carrying over the low numbers. Well, let's go to the formula that held that logic, highlight, copy, go back to our combination, click between the last two parentheses, add a comma, paste, Here's the formula for the millions, here's the formula for the numbers in the middle, and here's the formula for the lowest values. I just realized I have a parentheses in the wrong place. I'll have to remove this parentheses from the middle if and add it to the end of the formula. We'll hit check, fill it down, and now we have custom values for really large numbers, really small numbers, and everything in between. This is the column we want our chart to look at. So we'll go to the custom data labels, right click, format, select range for the values from cells, highlight the combined formulas, hit OK, and there we have custom data labels with different metrics and different formats based on the value. Here's a little pro tip for you. When you start writing formulas like this and it starts to get a little out of control in terms of understandability, I like to go in here and add carriage returns in the formula to break the logic up into rows. So for the second if, I'm going to hold down Alt and hit Enter and drop this down to a second row. Let's stretch this out. I'll do the same thing for the third if. So maybe this helps from a readability aspect. Now let's sprinkle a little BCTI magic on this formula. And here's how I would format this for maximum readability. Now although this looks really nice, the downside is when you have your formula bar reduced to just one row, when I hit enter, you can only see a fraction of the formula. So a beginner who doesn't understand that you can add these carriage returns might think that this is the entire formula. So you might have to educate your users to come over here and hit the expand formula bar button just so they can see the entire logic. I think it's a worthy sacrifice. Now how about instead of numbers above the bars, we had some sort of graphical indicator. High numbers get a smiley face, middle numbers get a neutral face, low numbers get a frowny face. Or maybe green checks for high numbers, red X's for really low numbers, and yellow circles for middle numbers. Let's start with emoji faces. I'm going to expand my formula bar and paste that formula from just a moment ago. But this time, instead of any formatting codes, I'm going to use Windows Emojis. Now, if you've never accessed the Windows Emoji library, this is accessible by holding down the Windows key and hitting the period. So when you have some time, scroll through this library and see all that it has to offer because it's very similar to the Emoji library on your cell phone. So for exceptionally good numbers, I'm going to use this smiley face. For the middle of the road numbers, Windows period. I'll use a puzzled face, and for my extremely low numbers, I'll use a sad face. Now just like normal formatting codes, these emojis have to be placed within double quotes. So we'll go through here and wrap each of these in a set of double quotes, hit check, fill it down, and now we see the emoji responses. Now these emoji responses are in black and white, but they will be color once you put them in the chart. So collapsing my formula bar, I'll go to the chart, right click, format data labels, and the range I'm going to select will be the faces. Hit OK, and now we have our emoji faces. 
If they're a little on the small side, they're just like fonts. You can click on them and resize them. Now how about instead of faces, we do green checks, red X's, and yellow circles. We'll expand our formula bar, paste in the formula that I use for the emojis, and then I'll replace each of these emojis with a different symbol. So windows period. For the very large numbers, I'll use a green check. For the middle of the road numbers, I'll use a yellow circle. And for the extremely low numbers, I'll use a red X. Hit enter, fill it down. Now we do see the checks, the X's, and the circles, but they're in grayscale, but not to worry, they will be color once we put them in the chart. So here's our formula. I'll collapse the formula bar. Go back to the chart, right click, Format Data Labels. For the values from cells, we'll select Range and highlight the new icons. Hit OK. And now we have nice icons to indicate status. I would like to give the user the option to switch between using the numbers, the faces, or the icons in their chart. Now obviously we can't point to all three of these at the same time, but similar to what we did before where we rolled up all the formulas into a single formula and then use that, let's give the user a data validation dropdown to pick between numbers, faces, and icons, and then based on that selection, pick one of these three columns. We'll start by building the data validation list. I'm going to scroll over, we'll click in this cell, and we'll type something like select label type. So here's where we'll create our data validation dropdown list. We'll go up to data, data validation, we'll set this to type list, and in the source field we'll just hard code the three choices. Numbers, faces, icons. Hit OK, and the user can choose between one of these three. Now currently the data validation dropdown list is not connected in any way to the custom number formatting. So in a new column, this is where we're going to create the logic that will detect the user's choice from the data validation and then select from one of the three columns of custom number formatting. For the user's data validation dropdown, I have named that cell labels. By naming it labels, this will make our formula look nicer because I won't have to say $p $1. So the formula for the rolled up logic, we'll go in the formula bar, we'll start off with an if statement, and we want to know if the user's selection for labels is equal to faces, then get what's in G2. Now the false for this if will be to kick off a second if, and this will test to see if labels is equal to icons. If it is, we'll take what's in H2. Now if the user didn't select faces or icons, then we know they selected numbers, or we want that to be the default value. So the false for the second if will be to get whatever's in F2. Close parentheses for the second if, close parentheses for the first if, press enter, fill it down, and we can see in our test when the user selects numbers from the dropdown, the selection gives us numbers. If they choose faces, then we bring the faces over. And if they choose icons, we bring the icons over. Back in the chart, right click on a data label, format data label, and now we'll set the value from cells range to this combined logic section. Hit okay. So if the user chooses icons, we get the icons. If they choose faces, we get the faces. And if they choose numbers, then we get the numbers that were formatted according to their range. Now, if you don't want to see all of this logic, you can hide these columns. So I can say right-click hide. But just be mindful that you can't hide the column that holds the values being used by the chart. If you hide this column, your data labels will disappear. So if you don't want the user to see this information, consider building it someplace off screen where the user can't see it, have the chart point there, but then just don't hide that column. Because if you do and you right-click hide, you'll lose all your beautiful labels. And we don't want to do that. Be sure to download the solution file from the link in the video description so you have access to all of these formulas that I created, the data validation, and the custom number codes. Hopefully this will provide you with some inspiration to create some very creative dashboard interfaces. Thanks again for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.